everybody to the one to go show presented by our friends over at dirt track supply from the beautiful blue line brews studio it is Bert Lehman in the blue shirt with the beautiful late models on the background. It is Ryan Ayo with the white hat and pink shirt once again on the road. And it is Puka here in the fans fun shirt, fresh out of Cedar Lake. All of us fresh out of Cedar Lake. So welcome, boys, to episode 140. Thanks a lot. Bert, I finally got to meet you in person, man. Yes, yes. <laughs> See, show's over. That's the hot take of the week. That's the number one <laughs> moment I got to isn't it crazy, right? Two and a half years of doing this show, and that's the first time we met in person. It was a pleasure. Um, it was fi finally nice to meet you. Yep, same here. It, it was nice to meet you, too. And uh, we did the, the first night. We all did the After, after okay. the Races podcast, and I read one of the comments that, Bert, wow, you are really small. So <laughs> yeah, I guess I, we, I am really John, short. John Cardi gave us the, the, the Three Stooges. I'm like, yeah, that. that that's probably that's probably not wrong, right? Yeah, so <laughs> ding dong and number, I guess it is, or whatever you want to call us, but it's all good. We had a hell of a lot of fun. And then you mentioned dirt track supply there, Puka. A little shout out to our boy Trevor Anderson, another podium, second place in the repairable vehicles tri state late model series action at Wagner over in South Dakota, extending that point lead out. He can taste it. Just Trevor, take it home, buddy. Take it home. You're that close. Get that championship. Proud of you. And uh, it was old-timers night also. I don't know if you knew that. Over at the Cheyenne Speedway in Lisbon, North Dakota, Todd Carter won the street stock feature, Aero Nation, Aero Chassis, and Victory Lane. Todd Carter's a little bit bigger than me, but he's, he's <laughs> older than me too, right? So it is what it is. Congrats, Todd Carter, on the win. <laughs> Yeah, so Dirt Track Supply, Avco, Weld, Winter's Gears, All-Star Products, Weir's, Sunoco, um, Hoosier Tires, QA and Shot, everything. So check them out, dirttracksupply.com. And by the way, speaking of Cedar really quick, last time my kids told me, I put a little TikTok up, 114,000 views. We went viral at the USA National. So um, all of you jump on the one to go show TikTok and check that out. All right, let me get my agenda going here. Oh, okay. Here's where we're going to start. Sorry. Because I'm recording here. I got to. Okay. So, uh, Ryan, want to do a quick shout out to the drivers. I go a little bit of the extra mile with the car shows, mall shows, all that good stuff. We talked about that. Bert and I did earlier this year about, you know, get out there, promote racing. It's such a great sport. You know, there's the good, the bad, the ugly, but we all love it. Right. And, and I know how much time it takes to get your car ready, work on the car, get to the track, race, all the maintenance plus work and, and all that. But there's certain drivers that have gone above and beyond. And, you know, thanks to all the, the fans, the drivers, everybody that's sent us pictures of the stuff they did. There was a ton of them, too many to mention right now. But getting cars for the sponsors, getting cars in parades, getting cars to the schools. And uh, we threw a bunch of those names in a hat. We said that we were going to. We got a little something, something there for uh, Jeff Wood and Jeffrey Wood hometown boys it wasn't it was it was drawn out it wasn't a hometown favorite deal there's few people might call call cheating on that one but uh they've done multiple things you know they do that that car show over at the sawmill every year which is really cool you know a sponsor there so it's kind of a double win for them and then just this past week the five best days of summer they had the st louis county fair in chisholm and jeff and jeffrey woods they had their car at the fair on race day which was a kid's night. I think they had bike. They had something going on at the races to try to get more people there. So it's super cool to see people doing that. Um, Jeff Wood, keep an eye out. We got a little something for you. Congratulations on that, and good luck the rest of the year. All right. Please, if you can, nail the subscribe button, nail the like button. We would appreciate that as we get going here. Okay, a quick blast from the past, brought to you by Impact Health Sharing Ryan. Yeah, I mean, if, if this is the time of year, right? So small businesses, people that pay for their own health care, this is the time of year you need to start looking at it, open enrollment coming, and we're not too far away. So if you're paying too much for health care, if you don't have health care, give me a text, give me a call. I'll see what I can do. Maybe it might be for you, it might not, but I'm going to see if I can save you some money. been able to save people thousands of dollars, great rates, great deductible. You can go to any doctor, Impact Health Sharing, hit me up. Okay, episode one. What? I just have to log off for a bit. You guys can keep going. I have to log off for just a little bit here. Okay, we'll keep her going. Blast in the past. So episode one forty. 
Nada on the 140? Well, I do have – Kind of. I think there was a Zimmerman. I don't remember, but I remember Dave Adams had the Crossroads Cafe late model, and I believe there was a 140. I don't – if somebody knows who that was, post it in the comments. But I, I have a picture somewhere of it, probably at home. So that would be the 140 I have. Don't know much about the guy, but, uh, of course, we have some 40s. And, and, you know, Puka, who do you have? Well, Dave Adams, that was my guy. Yeah, 40. Uh, <laughs> the first Labor Day, I knew of Labor Day – but I took a nap, fell asleep. My dad grabbed my brother, didn't grab me, probably because I was too young. Dave Adams, whatever year that Dave Adams won the Labor Day shootout, 83, 82, something. Um, so that's always kind of a sour memory. But Dave Adams is my guy, number 40. How about you? Yeah, and of course, you got. we'll talk Dave Adams. You got Dave, Buzzy Adams, the human highlight reel, probably one of the best ever. As far as entertainment goes, he's fun to watch. I love watching Buzzy, his kid Blake. He's got to be a year, maybe two, from getting in a big car. He's been running go-karts, so the tradition carries on. Dave Adams running the Rice Lake Speedway. And I just want to give an extra shout-out there because last year we were probably a little critical of the track over at the Rice Lake Speedway. And I've watched a lot of races this year, and they kind of found something there. Great race in action every Saturday night at Rice Lake. Um, another one I have, I don't have the year in front of me. You can look it up online. But a former was sort of late model national champion. Might have won two. For sure he won one. But Rainbow Rick Popovich. And I believe he won the national title in the 75 car that he bought from Larry Phillips, I think. I think he won in that car. But prior to that, he was number 40. And that guy could flat out wheel a race car from the Twin Ports. I don't know if it was Hermantown or Duluth. But uh, Rainbow out of body special. He was absolutely a rocket ship for many years. And then I got to give some love to my buddy in the T40, right? Interesting fella, right? If you know T40, if you know Danny Thomas, he's an interesting fella. But he can wheel a car. Puka, he stole one from me up at the Wasota Classic in Grand Rapids. And I kind of felt like I'm probably going to win this one in the Super. And T40 took one from me. I got second. He <laughs> still hasn't let me live that down. But uh, he's running a modified now, so good old Danny Thomas. But uh, Bert had to step off there for a minute. That's okay. We'll, we'll catch him up. Our buddy Mason Aaron. Check out Mason Aaron's videos on, on YouTube, on Facebook. Does a great job. He's helping us with the editing. Sorry, buddy. We're giving Mason a little extra work right now because we're going to have to do some editing to get Bert back in. Not a big deal. But uh, check him out. He does a great job. Does a lot for the sport. A lot of cool behind-the-scenes videos. If you haven't seen them, it's definitely worth looking at. So with that said, What's, what's next? Let's do the top five moments of the week brought to you by Brad Parsons, Soil and Egg. Yeah, Brad Parsons, good buddy of mine, four racers, by racers. And, and let's face it, if you race, if you're around racing, you like to win. Well, if you're farming, you like to win there too, right? What does winning mean in farming? It means more crops, better yields, more profitability. That's what he can do for you. Give him a call. His number is here. It's posted. We'll post the number also somewhere on our on our show uh, to make sure you can get a hold of Brad. But he has a lot of different products, and you can mix them right with your current spray package. Give his stuff a try. It's proven, and it's what you need to win in farming in 2022. All right. As you all know, Ryan Aho loves drama. We got a little bit of drama for the national point contender, Ryan. Take it away. Well, number five. Right. We talked, I've talked about this. Dexton Cook has had a tremendous season. He won last night at the Gonda Claus Speedway in the Superstock. And, and really, in my mind, not that there's not other talented guys out there, but he's the guy that if anybody's going to knock the 7A off the podium for national title, it's him. But he's ruffling some feathers. And I mentioned it last, a couple weeks ago. There's a few people getting a little salty. So here's a video clip. From this past weekend at the North Central Speedway in Brainerd, a final lap incident with the 46 of Dustin Nelson, who hell of a racer. He's won a lot of races. Me and him maybe ruffled some feathers on each other's cars uh, quite a while, quite a few times. My buddy Mike may have walked home after one of those incidents. Just saying. But uh, you make the call, and uh, you'll see what happened here. Last lap contact. Dustin Nelson got his spot. 78K to the back. Okay. Was it on the 78K? Did he lose it? Did 46 drive into his left front? If he did, did he do it on purpose? I don't know. You make the call. You decide. And all I can say is this. 
They got Fastlane Super Stock Series coming up next week. They're going to be racing against each other on Friday. If you like a little high octane Super Stock racing, keep an eye on that 78K and 46. I think there's going to be more sparks flying before the end of the year. All right, number four. For those of you that are on our podcasting on Apple or Spotify, you're going to get over to YouTube, get over to Rumble, get over to Facebook to check out the epic finish in the World of Outlaw Spring Cars down at I-55 for the Ironman 55, Ryan. Yeah, Paducah, Kentucky. Puka, I've driven by that track a couple times now in the truck. It's like, God, I just want to stop there. It just looks like a badass place. But night number one of the Ironman 55, kind of the prelude, epic slider by Carson Messino. What a, I mean, it was a thing of beauty. Took the win. Night number two, though, the, the reigning champ, the point leader, he one-upped them, right? They flipped the switch. He, uh, um, Brad Sweet got it done night number two, extended that point lead, and took home the $20,000 payday. Big week this week, Knoxville Nationals. Yeah, Sweet needed a win. It's been, well, well he won, what, a couple of weeks ago, but I think he was sitting at one win for a very long time there. Speaking of Ironman, was Zoda's Ironman, Shane Zabraski. It feels like a year ago that we did this. It was probably two. Win number 800. Now, win number 700 was cooler. It was at the King of Dirt at the I-94 Sure Step Speedway. Big, big, big show, right? This one here, nothing against the track. Fiesta City Speedway, regular night, but win number 800. Puka, most people don't have 100 wins, let alone 200 or 300. We're talking 800 feature wins. And the question I have for you, can he reach 1,000? Yeah, he can. He's 40-ish, 40? Yeah, somewhere in that neighborhood. Big bar. Yeah, I think Shane's a couple years older than me. He's got to be at least 50. Oh, he he's doesn't look a day over 60. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. So he's got 10, 15 good years. Yes, he'll get to 1,000. Bert, your opinion? Uh, that's a lot. Oh, oh, Bert is back. Yeah, I'm back. I've been all back right. for a while. I oh, I just thought you were ignoring me. That's all. I had to slide my screen. <laughs> I'm not used to doing this on the phone. I'm always on the computer. So Bert's back. So yeah, Bert, your, your thoughts on that? Um, I'll. I'm gonna say he'll come up short. Two hundred more is is a lot to get. Um, but uh, I have a. I'm interested to hear your opinion on this. I saw this post. I saw this question posted on Facebook about this. Um, I mean, it's well known about all the feature wins that Dick Trickle amassed over his career. Uh, the, so the question was, what is more impressive? What Dick, Dick Trickle did? Well, maybe not what's more impressive, but is this on par? Is Sabraski getting 800 wins on par with what Trickle did with all the features that he's gotten? that he's won it's hard to compare right you know because dick trickle raced a lot of asa stuff and i mean it's it's just a different realm right you can't i guess you can't really dog the person for the era they're racing in right i mean it's, it's kind of tough to do that i will say this uh both of them had very accomplished careers um dick trickle did a, i mean he did a lot of dirt stuff too right but uh, a lot of it was on asphalt so that don't really count just kidding. Hating asphalt people. Don't go hate me out here. But Puka, you got a thought. To me, Shane's are more impressive. Dick Trickle time trialed and started up front. Shane Sabraski earned his way in and has to start eighth every day. So Sabraski's wins are more impressive. We have to remember that. This is, you know, he's not a member of a professional racing tour where, well, we heard the Bert's going to talk about it later, probably the whining, passing points. Other, these big guns, they want to go to a race, time trial, start on the pole, not pass a car, walk away with the check. Let's face it, they do. <laughs> well, you make a good point. Uh, you also have to, con I mean, and this is where what Ryan said about two different eras, you know, it's hard to compare. Uh, you got to look at, you know, Sabraski, um, he's raced in two divisions to amass those wins. And with so many different divisions it's kind of diluted um you know it's not like it's just one division and you're getting all the wins against all those drivers you know the the divisions are split so you know you have good drivers in every division so you know just to play a little devil's advocate well how many yeah. does trickle and have? he won 
it was more than two, right? Because mods, supers, Midwest mods, I think yeah. mini stocks in there and some other things. So, I mean, it's been multiple things, but it's different. It, that's a good, that's a good topic. You know, fans put your comments. What do you think? Is Dick Trickle's, you know, all his wins more impressive or are Shane Sabraski's? I will say this. Shane, so first of all, I want to note, Bert said Shane's not good enough to get 200 more wins. Yeah, I want to get that out there. Um, I think he can. Now, second thing is, you're not going to meet a more humble guy, right? Usually somebody wins that much, and they're, let's be honest, they're an asshole, right? They're like, they're cocky, and they're all that. The whole Sabrasky group, Shane, his family, everybody involved, they're just top-notch people, and and he acts like he's done it before because he has, and he's, he's never that guy that thinks he's better than everybody else, even though, let's be honest, he is. So, Shane Sabrasky, he's, he's the man. I, 800 feature wins, that is dang impressive. For the record, I didn't say he wasn't good enough. I just don't think he's going to race long enough. <laughs> I, that's not what I heard, but maybe I cut out. I'm not sure. So, how many wins does Trickle have? Or does it, if, if somebody doesn't know the number, we'd want someone to put it in the comments. Yeah, I, I don't know off the top of my head how many Trickle has. Okay, maybe one of our guys, Mike or Brad or Jeff or somebody. Uh, do your research, put it in the comments. We'd appreciate that. All right, one of the biggest events in all of Azota, sometimes, like to me, gets a little overlooked because it's right on the eve of the USA Nationals. But last week, Rice Lake, once again, the little dream, Nick Trainer taking it home, Ryan. 20, was it 28212 Is that what it was? I mean, 28's in my head, yeah, something. Yeah, over $28,000. Guys, that's two little dreams he's won in the last three years, amassing over $50,000, right? Over $53,000 in winnings. That is unbelievable. Like, he he was like, that is just crazy. Never in his life did he think he'd win that much, especially in a street stock. But, I mean, you know, it, yeah, it falls down. And you hear a lot of the haters. They're like, oh, you need to spread it all throughout the field. Well, that's not what the show's all about. The show's all about how high can we get this deal and uh, I tell you what, he's not disappointed. Congratulations, Nick Trainer. That's a huge one. And pretty much all the top drivers in, in street stock racing were there. A couple didn't make the show, uh, make it over there because of the weather, scared them away. But to win that kind of show and defend it on his home turf, right? Back to, you know, there's been many, many, many little dreams. From Jim Randall himself, Eric Olson, that have been won by hometown guys. I tell you what, you know, you go into Rice Lake Speedway, that hometown group of drivers over there is going to give you something for sure. Absolutely. Uh, and go ahead. No, go ahead. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Uh, I just wanted to say, uh, Ryan, you said that uh, some say that uh, the amount of money collected should be split throughout the entire field. Um, while, you know, I see why some people say that, but uh, the reality is if that were to happen, we probably wouldn't be talking about this right now. <laughs> 100%. Hey, and hats off to the track, right? They got it in. You know, I mean, they almost did it. There was weather coming. They had to actually evacuate for a tornado warning, you know, and they had to fight off the rain. And, you know, so they had to work their tails off to make sure that show got completed. And I think Nick Trainer, you should probably send a Christmas card to everybody involved because uh, they very easily could have said, you know what, tornado warnings, rain coming, we're canceling it. It is what it is. That would have been unfortunate. That would have been hard to get people's money back or whatever. But, uh, man, good job to the Rice Lake Speedway on that. All right. And our number one moment of the week that I got to witness in person. You two should have been there. You were both there. You should have stuck around. But the Double One Express from 17th to 1st in the, you know, and I aptly named the local late models of Cedar Lake now the one to go show late models. So that's what we're just going to read. They're not with Zoda. They're not low. I mean, the one to go show late models. At Cedar Lake, um, like I said, 17th the first, Double One Express. Uh, did you see that, Bert? Uh, I did watch the video uh, on Sunday. So, uh, yeah, I mean. You went was, home? Yes. You didn't uh, make it I Saturday night. We went home Saturday morning. The forecast was awful. and uh, Girlfriend. So, so we, we did go home. <laughs> I stood in your uh -oh, spot, Bert. I, I don't know if I'll ever be able to sit again. You went, you went home. I, I had to go to work, right? So I missed Saturday. But well, well, here's the ironic thing: we left because of the horrible forecast. There's a hundred percent chance of rain and a seventy percent chance of rain at night. And so I went to the races in Shano, 
on Saturday night, and they got rained out after the first feature. <laughs> <laughs> and Cedar, as always, oh, got donkey it in. award, donkey award. The yep, first. I deserve it. Give me a donkey award. I, I I'll take it. <laughs> but any comment, or, yeah. Yeah. guys? Let's be honest. I mean, we've talked about late model racing with soda late model racing. It's you don't see a lot of passing, right? I'm not not that kind of passing. Not usually. To come from 17th to 1st with that group of drivers and on that stage, and, and there wasn't attrition. He passed the drivers, and he did it in a hurry. He got to the lead. It was quick. Um, that was probably the most impressive run I've seen in a Wissota late model in quite a while. Or It's not Wissota there, but same dang thing, right? But uh, Pat Doerr, I mean, tip of the cap to the double one express. That dude still got it. Yeah, for sure. And a funny and a, the jabs with Rick Eshelman up in the World of Outline announcer up in the booth continued during that interview. So it was classic. And uh, and remember that heat race I talked about, uh, Bert, a little bit with you on Friday. Uh, you know, he was, I don't know, started fifth or something like that in the heat race. Right. And, you know, whatever, he'll, you know, he'll get into a spot, you know, enough for the redraw and blasted to the lead. And all the fists were pumping on the front stretch. You know, the local crowd there for Pat Door. So, yeah, heck of a weekend for Pat Door. All right, so we're going to talk about the trackside report. I think you're going to know which race uh, we're talking about. But before we get to it, Blue Line Brew is right behind. This is what the bags look like. This is what the K-Cups look like. All right, so I, I put a challenge out a little bit last week. Not really a challenge, but I said send us your picks. Social media, uh, messenger, email, the one to go show at gmail.com of yourself enjoying some brew so i can share it with our folks from blue line brews but i'd still like to do so i'm issuing you a challenge this week please get me some pictures we're going to get it over to them they'll put it on their social media and by the way if you're not following their social media uh please do do so but uh, again 10 percent of profits uh officers falling in the line of duty injured in the line of duty uh, they're always screening every quarter they, they award the grants uh, families uh they help them out so great coffee Great cause, bluelinebrews.com. Save 15 is the promo code. Save 15% on your entire order. All right. Trackside report. Like we've the aforementioned, the three stooges were all there. Uh, I don't know who, Bert, Ryan, Bert, you want to start just, I guess, just kind of uh, your thoughts, comments, feelings on uh, the 35th annual USA National? I mean, overall, I thought it was, was a very good show. Um, you know, yes, I did leave Saturday. I did watch the, the replay, though, on Sunday. Um, I, I do have to mention, uh, Jake, Kim, uh, in, uh, Friday's recap video, I've, you, neither one of us brought up Jake, Kim, and he, he, he was in, the in amongst the top of the drivers on the, in the total of points accumulated in his heat race. So, uh, you know, got to give some, uh, a shout out to him for, for qual or for, gathering yeah. so many points and uh overall i i love this the usa nationals format with the double heats patching points that sort of thing i would like to see one tweak done after what happened this last weekend um i would like to tweak the dash a little bit so because tyler herb was at the top of the points and based, you know, they redraw for the starting positions in the dash, and he wound up starting in the back. And you know, Davenport was, I think he might have been the last car in the dash, and he draws the pole. Um, I think the top four in points should redraw one through four, and then the next four draw five through eight, and then let the, you know, if you if you start back and you make it to the front, and then you deserve to start on the pole. But, I mean, I'm a J.D. fan, uh, but, you know, I didn't think that he deserved to start on the pole um, in both those races. Go ahead, Ryan. Yeah, I, I'd agree with that. So, you know, but J.D. was dominant, right? He really should have won both nights. The first night, of course, uh, unfortunate. It sounds like ignition. I'm not exactly sure what in the ignition system, but somebody said they heard a pop and uh, something failed there. Marlar was kind of there, but I don't think he would have had anything for JD. Night number one, the night I was there, I mean, I talked about this on our post race. To me, the show was the B1 bomber. Um, it captivated the crowd. Hometown guy. Best race of the night was a heat race between him and Tyler Herb. It was absolutely epic. Everybody was on their feet. And then in the feature, yeah, the class of the field was JD and Marlar, for sure, right? But the race was you know between the b1 bomber and and everybody else 
and he was there in a hell of a second place finish. A great to see. Congratulations. The rest of the weekend didn't go very good, but to be able to finish second night number one, that was awesome to see. Um, of course, got to meet Bert, right? That was a win all by itself. <laughs> That's wanna a highlight. My, <laughs> yeah, want to thank my buddy Merle, right? Because I was driving, I was working, and I parked over in uh, New Richmond, and my buddy Merle came over and picked me up, brought me to the track, so hats off to him. Thanks for that. Congrats on getting the show in, right? The fact that they fought the weather and, you know, they got the show in and Puka, there was moisture on the track. They didn't cancel. Just saying. Um, they, that, that, and that actually provided some good racing. Misting during a B feature and they actually piled up twice and we thought, ah, oh, they're gonna, if you saw Lance and they, when this was the World of Outlaws, we thought, oh, they're going to red and they just kept going. We're going to get this show in. Hell or high water. Yeah, it was a little sketchy, but it's like, that's like old school racing. You know, you back in the day, you did what you had to do. You know, you, you raced. And, and now a lot of people are like, oh, we can't have that. But I thought it was, the crowd needed it. You got to finish the show. And it was a little bit of a bummer, right, that they didn't be able to start the features later. I We all understand they had to do it. They didn't get to do the lights out deal. But I'm here to tell you, Chris Deppen and Rick Eshelman still, I mean, even without the lights out, the way that they announce them and the way that their voice inflection. And I mean, is there a better driver's intro than the USA nationals at Cedar Lake, even without all of the extra stuff? I mean, it, I thought it was incredible. Oh, they're fantastic. I love it. So overall a great event, great atmosphere. I mean, it's a true crown jewel, little light. There were several cars that I'm going 50 grand to win, you know, where, where's T Mac, you know, where some of these guys not there, Devin Moran, why you know where Ferguson was t- talking about coming up? We'll talk about him, about him in just a minute. Thinking you know RTJ, what do they got to do? So here's a question for you guys: There's some top tier late model guys, right? That were not at the USA Nationals, and some of them, it's, it's like why not? It's fifty grand to win. Why? What do we got to do to get a few of them other guys there? I think, uh, yeah, and even Bronson left. The Simpson brothers weren't there a little bit. And RTJ and Hoffman were both uh, fans fun guys that didn't show up. Uh, you know, I think what it is up here, you're so far north. I mean, even though you're only coming from Illinois if you went to Ferrybury, but 50,000 is fine to win or maybe go 55. But what was the starting phase at 2,500, 3,000? Maybe that's got to look at what they do out at I-80, 5,300. So maybe that start phase has got to get up by 500 bucks. Bert? That could be. Yeah, I mean, possibly. I mean, I know, I mean, being this far up north, that's a big hindrance to uh, getting some of the drivers to come up here. And, you know, that's unfortunate because it's always really good racing. I mean, another one, Hudson O'Neill, um, you know, he doesn't, you know, he, he wasn't there. Um, but uh, some of the drivers the fans fund brought uh were were impressive you know it was good to see them make the trip up there uh you know um the, the 10 car uh, well he needs, he needs a donkey award right we got to give him a donkey award right Garrett smith no the uh, joe oh, oh, joiner yeah. joiner yeah yeah joiner. <laughs> come on man like he was fast <laughs> he was legit fast the first night i think he time trialed what second quick in his group and literally drove right past the scales and didn't scale <laughs> how does that happen I, I just don't understand right and then Bert Eastern Wisconsin how many Eastern Wisconsin guys were there one one yeah there's normally more than that Bert can you do a seminar over there for the Eastern Wisconsin guys on how to tighten lug nuts can you do that I mean <laughs> oh. I, I, I like Paul Parker I do he's a good dude I, I, I know Paul and, and Pete Parker was a legend but his tire fell off night one in the B main it's like seriously he was not happy I, evidently he probably went back and beat up his pit guy i'm not really sure but needless <laughs> to say tires more tires falling off on parade laps guys it's just it's mind-boggling <laughs> all right well, um, I gotta get- <laughs> well i do want to mention one more thing uh in the feature i don't think it really would have mattered but uh uh tyler herb did take the lead there uh just for a split second and then the caution came out and uh you know, like I said, in the in the big picture, I don't think it would have mattered. I think JD probably would have got him back, but it would have added a little extra ex- excitement. <laughs> right, right. 
Well, I just got to, I'll go through mine. Just thank my Wisconsin boys. They wanted to see the license plate they made me last year. Remember, I ran around with this for a day last year. I had no idea it was sitting on the front of my car. So, um, Doug, Copper, all you guys, uh, you know, I'll, I'll have it forever. Uh, I also want to thank the Mad Capper down in Stillwater. Took care of me and my kids on, on Friday. Uh, thanks, everybody there. Sarah, I, I know you subscribe, Sarah, so hi. And like I said, thanks for everything. Um, had my liquid nitro and my green chili burrito at Cedar, so I accomplished that. That's great. Fans Fund, uh, another great year. Thanks for everything, all you volunteers, everything you did. Lunch one was great. I uh, had a great time there. Um, my one disappointment would probably be the lack of South Dakota cars. I don't think we had one this year, correct? You know, because I, I thought I heard Searing was coming. You know, yeah, the I was surprised he wasn't there. You know, the McDonald's performance, what, two years ago was very impressive. You know, so I was, I almost said it last week. One of the things I'm looking forward to is the number of South Dakota cars that would come. Um, so with that being said, let me ask you guys a question here. You know, that you know, 41, I think it was 46 in the outlaws, 41 on Friday with the local one to go show late models. With that kind of, you know, because remember the legendary, since we've been doing the show, they're what, 18, 19, they could barely maybe get 20 late models. Is this show taking some of the shine off that late model portion of the legendary? Is this the big event now versus what used to be the Wazota 100? I think it's just two different animals, right? Because no no disrespect to the one to go show late models, right? Because they put on a hell of a show, right? Yeah. But everybody goes there to watch the national touring drivers you know so and i don't think it pays all that good right i think it's 2500 to win but i don't know how i don't think it pays back all that great and and quite honestly i get it they uh, they don't as a track promoter on that side wearing that hat you don't really have to i mean if you're getting 40 of them and that's what they're paying people are their people are coming in in droves to watch the the world of outlaw late models you know so I think that's why you didn't see some of the South Dakota guys and all that, because I just don't think the pay went through. You know, I, I don't know how, I don't think it was very deep. I don't think it was all that. Yeah, I don't think it right. Right. Sure. Um, I don't know if it's taking the place of the legendary. Um, I mean, from my um, aspect and I know race fans from Eastern Wisconsin who go to uh, the USA nationals, the fact that the local late models also race is a big uh, plus in their eyes because you don't, have, this is no disrespect, but you don't have to sit through a caution fest um, mid book, Midwest mod, mod feature and that sort of thing. And, We're uh, throwing haterade at the Midwest mod people. We got a lot of, Bert, we got a lot of viewers, right? Midwest mods, and now you're talking smack. I like Midwest mods. I get. Well, I like them too, I'm, but I'm I just don't... saying sometimes they can they can have a lot of cautions. Well, I thought about that. So Fairbury last weekend had 80 some late models. You know, Cedar had like 46 and 41. To me, that's 87. You know, we had 87 late men. I said I get just as much enjoyment out watching the one to go show late models as I do the World of Outlaws. I mean, I'm kind of there to see the World of Outlaws. Like I said, seeing Door go from 17th to first was fun. You know, it was a great race, you know, so I, I like what they got cooking down there. Well, and watching the one to go show late models, um, I actually missed watching Jesse Glenn's and Giassi racing with the local guys uh, because every year those two really mix it up and do really well. And, you know, it was like, you know, I, I understand, you know, they're trying to, you know, race with the big boys with the open motors and stuff, but I miss seeing them race in the local show. Well, Giassi was in, right? I mean, he, he had that B main one and broke something. I don't remember what broke, but so, I mean, and he had more bad luck last night in Superior. So Giassi, just terrible luck. Lens, he's just going to write off 2022 as like this year never happened. It's just been a debacle for him. Jimmy Mars um, just had it won the first night. I don't know if something broke. He got in the wall hard in, in the one to go show late models. Um, rumor has it he had concussion type symptoms. I don't know if he had a concussion, but he was supposed to start front row in the world of Outlaw B, and he just never showed up Saturday. I think it was maybe because of that. I'm not sure, but he was in Superior. Sure. 
All right. Any other final thoughts? Garrett Smith, real deal. I liked watching him. Uh, yeah, he was fun to watch. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he's, uh, like I said, he's, he's got a future in uh, dirt late models. Anything else on the USA Nationals? Next. All right. Time for the hot takes brought to you by RayShirts.com. It was on their webpage today, just 200 bucks. Or some of you might say, I'm a low-budget race team. I can't get shirts. But you want to get some shirts, sweatshirts for those that help you, wife, girlfriend, maybe both. I mean, you know, I mean, that's it's it's 2022. That might happen. Uh, but he said he can get you started for as little as 200 bucks. BuyRayShirts.com. In addition, they do screen printing, embroidering. Uh, signs, race wraps, vehicle wraps, decals, all kinds of promotion, promotional items. So buy race shirts.com and our first hot take <laughs> talk a lot about teching drama, Ryan, we've got more teching drama on the national scene. Unbelievable. So I had people asking me and I, I was wondering because Ferguson was originally talking that he was coming to USA nationals coming up to superior. He's an old show. Where's Chris Ferguson? The guys, he's had a pretty good year. He's fast. And he went to Jamaica, Virginia, Virginia Motor Speedway. I think it was a USA 100 or something like that, 20 grand to win. So here's what happens. So at that particular race, they had a, a spec, I think it was a DT70 right rear tire rule. So they had, they had a specific tire rule you had to run at that event. Okay. Now, he didn't have that exact spec tire for the right rear, but he did have a 70 which was basically the same thing. So prior to the event, he calls the series promoter. What was it? The Iron Man series. Is that Iron Man? South? Ult that ultimate, 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 ultimate. Yeah. Yeah. Ultimate Southeast or whatever it's called. Okay, yeah. So he called the series promoter and he said, Hey, can I run this right rear tire? Can I run it? And he sounds like if you go to Chris Ferguson's Facebook page that he had his brother on the phone and his dad and it was on speaker and they said, you know, yeah, here's the specs. Here's what the tire is. Here's the number. And the series promoter said, yep, no problem. As long as it's a VT70, you're good. You can run that tire. So they go through the show prior to the feature, prior to the event. The tech guys go into all the cars, marking all the tires, right? Because I think they could only run four tires for the event. So they were marking the tires. They looked at all the tires. No issue. Go racing. He wins $20,000. The next day, he gets notified, oh, we're going to have to dis – I believe it was the next day. Um, we're going to have to disqualify you because your right rear tire was not the proper one for this event. There was, it wasn't, like, altered. It wasn't softened. They didn't find any, raw any different materials in it. But they decided after the fact that, well, we can't let you run it. So clearly, some driver bitched and said, well, he won on that tire, and we're all on this tire something happened there right and the series promoter says well here's the deal we're gonna have to disqualify you and it was a shit show i mean literally he if you look at his facebook page and just read the comments on there and just read his he kind of had a big long um thing that he wrote out he's not happy um to to allow to tell somebody you can run a tire and then detect the tire pre-tech the tire and the official says that's good to go the series promoter went on to even say well the tech guy didn't even know what he was looking at really <laughs> that's pretty easy to go with this so twenty thousand dollar payday guys they got wiped away he's not getting paid I, honestly i'd probably burn somebody's house down i'm just saying anything bert uh well i i just want to say i mean if everything went down the way he described it in his Facebook posting, uh, yeah, I mean, he has, he has a legitimate gripe. Um, I mean, one thing I always, when a driver, when a driver is penalized for a rule and then they say, well, I didn't realize that you did it that way. Uh, you know, you always think, well, it's the driver's responsibility to find out what the rules are and, in that and according to what he posted that's exactly what he did that he he asked if he could use this specific tire and he was told that he could so um you know in that regard he did everything correct and you know he's got a legitimate gripe it, in my opinion well it'll be interesting so on the record really quick that did not happen at the gondic law speedway don't put that on <laughs> 
But we'll see this week now. There'll be plenty of time for the Ultimate Series to respond here today, tomorrow. Um, and if they don't respond, um, I think it's a situation where they're going to call the, give themselves a donkey award, kind of like the World of Outlast Sprint Cars did for the incident at Weed Sport last week with Hot Shell. They can make themselves a donkey award. Uh, just real quick on that. This is not even in our notes, but uh, basically no punishment for Sheldon. The results stand, uh, but it is okay to throw a helmet during the race onto the track, cause a caution. There's no problem. And I said last week, like Brian said, Turbo gets a year. I said, there is no way Sheldon's getting a year. As a matter of fact, I said, I kind of was on the side of Sheldon. I think Wu made a mistake. I think they admitted they made a mistake. Yeah, that was interesting. I mean, you, two wrongs don't make a right. They definitely they probably did make a mistake, but what he did there, I was flabbergasted. He didn't get penalized. Now, Brad sent us over uh, some comments saying that the official from the incident with Donnie Schatz a few weeks back um, with Donnie Schatz's pit guy. Pit guy yeah, sounds yeah, like yeah. that official got suspended or maybe terminated. I'm not sure, but there was uh, uh, some repercussions there. Yeah. All right. So let's move on. So we have a fan <laughs> question of the week. So, Bert, um, like Benji the Cross, he has a habit of racing two classes here and there out east. Yes. Mullins yes. here and there. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Fan question of the week. Here we go. Should drivers that field more than one car have to pay twice for a wristband? Ryan, let's hear your thoughts. Well, it depends, right? If it's an event where there's a car fee, like a driver fee, or a, a, like a like a draw fee they have, well, then you got to pay for each individual car, right? But if you're paying just for a per person wristband to get into the pits, well, then absolutely not. You know, Bert, do them got do they have to pay for two wristbands over there? Do you know? I do not know. Um, <laughs> my guess would be that they don't pay for two wristbands. But I mean, I agree with you. I mean, if, if there's a car fee or entry fee uh, for for a division, they should have to pay those. But I don't think they should have to pay double to get into the races. And I, I know a few years back, there was a big to do with a couple tracks. And I don't know if they still do it. I know like Hibbing and that they don't like if you bring if you race two cars like in Hibbing Grand Rapids, you just pay for your normal wristband. I know there are some tracks that at least used to have to pay like if you race two cars they made you buy two wristbands as if you're two people and that makes no sense to me okay that that should not happen i mean let's be honest i mean we're talking what two three drivers four drivers you know a night maybe at most right that even do that so we're talking like a hundred bucks if there's a track out there right now that's that makes drivers buy two wristbands right to get in if, and they're if they're racing two cars if they're making them do that if you really need a hundred dollars that bad you may want to look at your business model it's kind of petty to me um i i don't know if there's any tracks that do that i don't know i don't want to call anybody out but so to answer the fans question if there's a car fee Yes, individual car. If it's just per person to get in the pits, in my opinion, one one fee, just like everybody else, um, you shouldn't have to pay for two wristbands. All right. Great place for some of your races to throw a comment in there for us. All right, Bert, you said you have a hot take. Um, Yeah, I have a hot take. Uh, we've talked about this in the past on this show. Um, well, Ryan has, has made the comment that racers aren't very smart. Um was and, one i know <laughs> <laughs> and uh ryan i i believe he i believe he's gone on a rant about this where uh uh drivers complaining about purses and then they don't support support a race that has uh a good purse um for example last week at shano speedway the i'm at shano speedway paid to win for for the imc sport mods uh, it was a thousand dollars to win, uh, which is the same amount of what as the uh, late models get weekly. But nor on a normal week, uh, the sport mods I believe get three hundred and fifty dollars to win. So I mean, they almost tripled the the two win. And um, guess how many cars they had this past Saturday? The one that rained out. Yes, fifteen. Twenty. 11. Oh, taking the under. <laughs> was, was part of it the weather? Do you think they looked at the weather? 
Hold on. My my phone is running low. <laughs> Uh oh, that's so difficult. Now you know he's got a girlfriend. He's been burning that thing. Tech, no, hey, um, he went home. Um, no, they, they had eleven cars. Um, I don't think the weather had anything to do with it. One forty-one Speedway, which was a normal week. I don't know. They had twenty to thirty. Well, see, one forty-one Speedway has the captain of the creek coming up i think it's next week the ten thousand to win imc sport mod show so i think some sport mods went there to get laps on the track but i mean some regulars from channel speedway were not at the thousand to win show um i mean i understand going to try to get extra laps but but when you have a chance to if you're good enough to win a feature and you have a chance to triple what you can win, I just don't understand going to a different track to get a night of racing on in hopes that you're going to win $10,000 in a couple of weeks. You're exactly right. And, and quite honestly, you know, the people that do that, that skip out on higher paying shows, like they don't, they, they completely have lost every right to bitch about the purse. I mean, it just makes no sense to me. And, and quite frankly, these tracks aren't going to continue to pay these big purses if they're not being supported, right? So, I mean, you, you got, especially if it's your home track, if you race it all the time and you skip the show because it paid more, I, I don't even know what to say. I, I just, it makes no sense to me. So that's a good hot take, Bert. And for the record, the one feature that did get in was the Sport Mod feature. So that driver did get a thousand bucks. Nice, <laughs> nice. Who won it? Uh, Jeff. Teske, Jeffrey oh. Teske. Okay. He's uh, actually the points leader. Nice. There you go. But uh, the driver that was second in points was not at the track. Oh, Ow. almost a donkey at work. <laughs> All right. Congratulations, Jeffrey. Ryan, an update on some officiating, or I guess more, <laughs> not an update, more officiating news from the Conic Law Speedway and Spear Wisconsin. <laughs> This time, okay, not, not only the more hate mail, it wasn't a bad thing on the, on the tech guy's part, but, you know, there was an issue. Night number one of the Superior Showcase, they had Wissota Mods and Wissota Superstocks. The tech official actually took it upon himself to actually tech engines on the top five. Cole Spacek, hell of a good racer, DQ'd, right? 30-day suspension, $1,000 fine. And quite honestly, guys, I mean, it's just dumb on his own part, you know. I he he ran a concept motor, and if you're a, if you're a, if you know much about the cars, I mean, this will make sense to you. There's a concept motor, a spec motor, a crate. Well, he was running a concept last year, and blew it up, so he put the spec in. And from what I understand, he was still taking. You get some advantages, spoiler, weight break. You get some different things if you run the concept. Well, he had the spec engine in with a roller cam, ro a roller lifters for sure. Maybe Cam, I'm not 100% positive. I'm assuming he got caught. And quite honestly, he was faster last year. It's not like it's not like it was helping him. So um, he feels he feels pretty sheepish about that. It's a bad deal. But uh, I guess he's just going to have to take one on the chin and come back stronger. Um, is Gondick Law Speedway a Wasota track? It is. Um. Is Wasota not the support divisions at the XR race? Are those not Wasota sanctioned? They are. So he got a 30 day Wasota suspension and a thousand dollar fine. Oh, when did this take place? Last night. Last night. Oh, now, okay. Because yeah, I was going to say he raced last night. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, and there's some different options with Wasota. We'll see what he does. He can pay a double fine and come back. If that happens, we'll talk about that rule because I think it's stupid. Um, but we'll get to that. But here's a little something on the teching side, guys. Somebody dodged a bullet, okay? The Iron Man, Shane Sabraski, dodged a bullet, okay? So and I'm going to tell a story because this almost happened to me a couple years back. So Sabraski, obviously, he has the 7A and the super stock in the mind, right? The, the West Metro Buick GMC cars, right? That's what he runs. But every once in a while he'll hop in a B-Mod for another guy and race the easy one car, right? So he goes down to the to the Viking Speedway. It's a couple weeks back, and, and, I, and I saw it because, I mean, he was DNFing, 
Randy Loggy was racing this car and he was having all kinds of, it just wouldn't run. Right. Well, when you got a miss, you change in everything. You change, you change distributor switches. He disconnected the tack wire. He did all kinds of stuff. And then, then he's like, well, Shane, you want to drive it? Shane goes out and drives it. And they didn't have the rev box, which, which is the rev limiter. You've heard about the chip rule and all that. There's a rev box that actually plugs in through the tack that wasn't connected. So Shane Sabraski got a thousand dollar fine, 30 day suspension from Wasoda Midwest modifiers. Okay. Now here's where he dodged the bullet just a few years back. And I don't know when this rule changed, but hats off to Wasoda because it needed to change. Okay. It used to be that if you got disqualified in any class, you will automatically lost all your points from all Wasoda classes got 30 days off and, and from all with soda classes that that could have happened. If this would have been a few years back, he would have been completely done and he would have been out of the national title race in everything. Hats off to with soda for changing that rule because he hopped in another guy's car. He's out of his control. Now here's where it happened to me. So my first year in the modifieds, um, I raced a guy's car over at the Gondek Law Speedway at the Northern Nationals. And I was running my mod, and he says, hey, do you want to run my super stock? I'm like, well, sure, I'll run it, right? I went out in the heat, guys, and I just absolutely stomped them by, like, a straightaway. And I'm like, I told Changa, my pit guy, I'm like, this thing's fast. This thing, like, this is fast, right? I'm like, I don't know what's wrong, but it's fast. Well, I saw Bill Engelstad, and me and Bill, it's not, you know, it's not a secret. We haven't always got along, right? But he took it upon himself to look me straight in the face. He's like, is that super stock legal? I'm like, no idea. He goes, remember, if you get caught in that, you lose your points in the mod. And I, I got fourth in national points that year. We had a hell of a year, second in the Como series and all that. He's like, just keep in mind, right? If you get DQ'd in that car, you're done in the mod too. I'm like, noted, <laughs> noted. I got like 10, 11. I mean, I was terrible, awful. And I'm like, I ain't touching that thing with a 10 foot pole, right? A couple weeks later, Kevin Eater jumps in that car at the Red Clay Classic. And he finished up second. I mean, he might have won, but he was on the podium for sure. Well, they took the engine apart that night. They, they checked in the side plug. They found some stuff 30 day suspension, $1,000 fine for Eater. That almost happened to me. So, Shane Sabraski, I know he listens to the show. Thank your lucky stars, right? that they changed that rule and they should have, right? Because if I ran that guy's car and got DQ'd, I shouldn't lose my mod points. That don't even make sense. It doesn't have nothing to do with each other, right? So they, you shouldn't, but there's a few people out there that are old school saying, oh, he should have lost his points and everything. That's hogwash. That's a bunch of bullshit. I don't think he should have lost his points and everything else, but uh, he very well could have if it would have been a couple of years ago. All right. Well, speaking of God, Nick, so they're racing right night, right now, night two of the Superior Showcase. You know, forty-two cars last night. Uh, <laughs> the no-fault rule kind of strikes again. Shane Clanton wins second XR win of the year. Remember, he won the whatever forty grand down in Bellevue earlier. Uh, pretty dominating win. But um, the no-fault rule. Shane Clanton uh, making friends. Who wants to start? Bert, comments on uh, Mr. Clanton. Well, I mean, he was leading and uh, there was a slower car in front of him. And I mean, he just, I mean, he just flat out ran into him. I mean, it was, I mean, it wasn't, you know, okay. He was trying to pass him and he slid into him. I mean, he just basically pushed him out of the way and um, the slower car spun. Clanton kept going and Clanton got to keep his spot. The caution came out. Clanton kept his spot, had clean air ahead of him uh for the rest of the race so uh yeah i mean he made made another friend he he's making a lot of friends this year <laughs> especially in wisconsin especially in wisconsin. he loves that georgia boy loves wisconsin Brian, <laughs> i think he needs to get shirts made that go say go out and hit the pace car right but it's like he hits everything it's like Mike. I mean, I don't know what. His, I mean he was fast he was legit fast he had the best car oh the yeah best car won the race but Johnny Broking, if he watched that feature, he's got to be shaking his head because there's been a couple times in the last couple of years where Johnny Broking was contending for a win or in the top three and dumped a lapper, right? And one of them was the RV show at his home track in Rapids. Well, if they had the no-fault rule, Johnny Broking's in second, has a shot at Ishans. You know, 
should he? No, you shouldn't. If you spin out the lap car, you should go to the back. For the life of me, I don't understand how anybody can justify that rule. It just makes no sense. We could go on for an hour. We aren't going to do that. The rule is stupid. Shane Clanton got a gift, right? But uh, the no-fault rule strikes again. <laughs> and, Ryan, you had to make a comment on a few guys that pulled into the pits and ended up uh, putting the race suits away. Well, I, Trevor will, and I don't know if something broke on their car. I don't, I don't think so. But Trevor Wilson got there. I don't think he even, I don't think he even time trialed. I don't, I don't believe Dave Flynn time trialed not very well. They both had with soda stuff, and both. I don't know if their cars broke. I'm assuming not, but they both loaded up and said we're out. Right. Well, that's in my mind. If that's what they did, that's smart business because I thought for sure there was going to be like ten open late models and there was 20 ish there was over 20 and when they looked at it they're like well shit we're gonna start in bat we ain't gonna make the feature there, there ain't no chance right and there's a tire shortage going on right now i talked to blake from hoosier like there's certain tires they don't even have them yet they're they're thinking like labor day weekend or just before hoping to have them well why go out and burn up your tires to run last in a b main for no apparent reason so, and a couple of them just didn't even show up for night number two. And it makes sense. I mean, you're racing against national touring late models with open motors. If you don't feel like you're going to compete, keep it parked, save your tires. If you want to go race, hey, hats off to you for trying. Nothing wrong with that either. But uh, I had people say, well, why didn't them race? And I'm thinking that, that has to be why. If somebody knows something more, post it in the comments. But I think it was probably just smart business. All right, Ryan, and, and uh, to wrap this uh, segment up, you have a viable, speaking of tires, you have a viable solution for the infamous wheel sticker rule. Yeah, I was talking to some, you know, I've got a lot of time to talk, right, on the headset when I'm driving my truck, but we, we talked about Kyle Kopp, right, a couple weeks back at the Fastlane Superstock Series race. He finished in the top five. He got disqualified for a sticker falling off a wheel. So I want you to understand this. So you take a, a, a wheel, a steel wheel, basset wheel or arrow or whatever, they all have embedded in them an actual a stamp, right? They're stamped with soda. There's also a sticker on there, right? And they all have a different number on them. And that's how and there, there's some money that goes to the point fund that comes from that deal, right? Well, if the sticker falls off and a tech guy catches you, that's you're illegal. Automatic disqualification makes no sense so i was talking to john cop down at cedar right and uh earlier this year they kind of did some creative stuff with the deck tin you know and he's like hey we, we you know we wanted to try it trc wanted to try it billy looked at it and he said eh, no <laughs> that ain't happening <laughs> fix it for next week and john's like i kind of figured that was going to happen but they didn't dq him for that right but then they get dq'd for a sticker falling off so the solution after talking to some different people about this is why don't they just look at it? And if a sticker falls off, look at that wheel, right? If it has a stamp, it's a fix it ticket, mark that wheel, confiscate it, make them not run it and then make them, make them certify it. Right. All they got to do. Why does Wasoda not have stickers, right? They should have the stickers themselves. If the sticker falls off and it's certified, make them purchase another sticker, right? Whatever they got to do. I mean, if it's stamped, it's clearly legal, but it should be a fix it ticket, make them get it recertified or whatever. And I think that would be a simple solution is that should be a secondary deal. Now, if you get caught two or three times with stickers falling off your wheels, okay, start DQ, right? But if it happens once in a sticker, just it's a fix it ticket. Let's, let's, let's not overthink this deal. Keep it simple. Well, I remember, you know, that reminds me back in the day, Nesbitt, uh, he had some old wheels and uh, rock chips, especially on the inside. People don't realize how many rocks and how much sandblasting they're taking. I mean, it can't be very hard for a sticker to get lifted off of a wheel um, in a race car of all, and a dirt, at a dirt track, you know. So right. um, I, I agree with you there. So, yeah, throw your comments uh, in right here. We appreciate that. All right. Time for who's hot, who's not? Yes, sir. Well, who do you got, Puka? Let's start with you. Who's well, hot? I mean, how about Kevin Eater? You know, getting her done on the big stage, popular Rock win. Dirty. Uh, yeah, totally. Uh, having a lot of fun. Uh, didn't get to talk to him on Saturday like I had hoped. See how, how late the party ran. Uh, but definitely in the hot seat right now, Kevin Eater. Bert? 
Um, I'm going with Superman. Uh, added another fifty thousand to uh, his uh, pocketbook. Uh, yeah, I mean he should have won on Thursday. Also, I uh, was leading. Uh, cost me two points. Uh, him not not winning on Thursday <laughs> night, <laughs> and uh, so. Uh, but I mean he won the big show, so I gotta gotta go with him. Yeah, I think one point six million ish dollars in winnings for uh, JD so far this year. I think of what I heard. Um, coming off the weekend, Ryan. Will he? I, I got a quick question. Will he hit two million? I think there's a very good chance he will, uh, because he's going to all the big shows. You know, he's not following a series, so pretty much any race he races in is a high dollar show. So what do we got? The XR winding down, but the XR's got that bonus at the end. Do you remember how yep. you qualify for that? What is that? You update all the races or majority of the races? And you can double, you double your, you your double winnings, the Vegas so. win, the yeah. double yep. desert win, and then we got hundred thousand dirt track world championship. What's the world paying this year? Fifty five. In that range, yeah. Seventy five. Seventy five. Seventy five at Florence. Florence fifty thousand at the top list. The next weekend in Batesville. <laughs> I'm going to take the under. I'm I'll take the over. I'm gonna take. I'm gonna take the under. It'd be super cool. It'd be a hell of a story. But I'm gonna take the under. But it's gonna be close. It's gonna be close. So <laughs> we got, we got on the hot list, right? I'm, I'm gonna go with a couple gals, right? And this ain't me calling them hot. All right, settle down. <laughs> settle up, okay? But Maria Brooksick in the Wasota Street Stock guys, she hasn't been talked about very much because she's not racing all you know national. She's racing her home tracks. She's on the podium every night, and she has to have. If I went back and looked, I bet she has the worst average starting position of all street stock racers. She starts eighth like every night, right? And uh, she won again. She actually won from ninth this past weekend. I believe it was at Miller. I think that she got it done. But Maria Brooksick has been just on fire. And Kennedy Swan, she she got another win over at the ABC Raceway in Ashland. So a couple gals out there. I'm not sure if you saw, but Ashley Mareworth upside down tonight at the Gonda Claw Speedway in the heat race. But uh, some of the gals out there showing up, the guys, Maria Brooks at Kennedy Swan, um, they, they definitely know how to get it done. All right. Uh, I've got on the not hot list the aforementioned Jimmy Mars. Really tough weekend at Cedar Lake. As a matter of fact, in our post race on Thursday, Ryan, you had said, you know, you know, Mars with the provisional, Cedar Lake, Mars not in the feature. That doesn't really happen. And of course, the you know, the bad wreck, potentially the, well, it doesn't sound like he had a concussion because he was racing last night in Superior. So let's hope that is the case, but a uh, really tough weekend uh, for Jimmy Mars. Bert. Well, I was going to go with Jimmy Mars, uh, but I'll, I'll, I'll pick another driver uh, off the top of my head. I'll go with uh, Bronson. Uh, just, he just wasn't doing anything. And in fact, he just left, uh, uh, left the grounds on Saturday. And, uh, um, it's really surprising because last year, you know, you really saw a lot of flashes of, of some good stuff from him. Especially at the USA Nationals. He led the majority right. of the laps. And uh, he struggled this year. Yeah, he's having a really, really off season. I'm going to go – I've got a question for you. How – over and under, how many wins does Rodney Sanders have in the USMTS series this year? I'm gonna, I'll, I'll just put it out there. Three, over under three. How many does he have? Under. I'm gonna go the under, and I think he won them like all in the same week. <laughs> Zero. Zero. Oh, okay. Zero. He hasn't won since the beginning of last year, and you know he's had some USRA wins, right? Some mod wins. Guys, forty-eight race USMTS winless streak for Rocket Rodney Sanders. He's one of the best ever strapped in a modified. He's talented. It's not a lack of talent, maybe lack of focus. I mean, he did get married. Maybe that's it. Sorry, Morgan. Right. Okay. <laughs> um, and we, we can't say it's an MB deal because, you know, Dustin Sorensen is leading the USMTS points in an MB. So it's not that. But uh, surprising, you know, Rodney Sanders was so good, right, for so long. Last year, they announced every race is going to be five or 10 grand to win. He's been pretty good as of late, but he just can't find victory lane. They up the ante, and he can't win. Rodney Sanders on the not hot list for sure. Oh, that's too bad. He blazed a trail. <laughs> now he's not winning. <laughs> so, well, maybe we'll turn it around. 
All right. So let's take a look at our uh, our locks of the week brought to you by Jay Schmidt Real Estate. Yeah, real estate by Jay Schmidt. If you're in the Watertown, South Dakota area and you need land, if you need residential, commercial, any real estate transactions, 20 years plus in business, racing family, um, still involved with the sport, real estate by Jay Schmidt is absolutely the go-to and our lock of the week. All right, I'm locking up Kyle Larson, Knoxville Nationals. It's Tuesday as we're recording. Tomorrow night, Wednesday, Knoxville Nationals, uh, you know, gets underway. So make sure you jump on Dirt Vision to catch that. But Kyle Larson will win Saturday's portion. Bert, who you got? He won Oskaloosa last night. There it is, heating up. <laughs> um, I am going with uh, AJ Demel will become the first driver to win the Mater Memorial Race at Red Cedar Speedway other than Jimmy Mars. Uh, I believe Jimmy Mars has won every Mater Memorial at Red Cedar. Uh, remember, one race was run at, I believe it was Rice Lake, and um, Buzzy Adams won that one. But otherwise, Jimmy Mars has won all of them at Red Cedar. But A.J. Demo will break that streak uh, this Friday. I'm surprised neither one of you picked this. Josh Rice is going to win the North <laughs> South 100, 75,000 win. He won the Ralph Latham from like fifth row or whatever. That dude is on a rail at Florence. I'm excited for that one. All right. Now we're time to move on to the last lap brought to you by Zuli's Race Engines. You can't beat them. Join them. That's kind of Ryan's slogan every week. Uh, you know, we kind of mention the winners. You can go to their Facebook, men, uh, mentions all the winners, but Zuli's Race Engines, Frank Zuli, give him a call. Um, you know, obviously, he builds a good piece. Ryan, do we have winners this week? Do we have winners? Was that racing? <laughs> I mean, come on. We, of course we have winners, right? Jake Knapper in the Superstock at Madison. Tucker Peterson, another win. Not talked about enough. This kid's pretty good over in Greenbush. Kyle Dykoff, another win over at the River City Speedway in Grand Forks. Aaron Blacklands at the Norman County Raceway in the Wolverine. Justin Vogel, your Stephen Speedstock Tour champion. He parked in Wilmer, uh, parked in Victory Lane in Wilmer. I'll tell you what, them Zuli race engines, they, they keep finding Victory Lane several heat wins at the Little Dream, but they did not get in Victory Lane in the AMA. Zuli's race engines.com. Right, Ryan, uh, you know, we're telling us a little bit about was it Cone Starts and at uh, Wilmer KRA Speedway last week. Um, so you got some follow up news on that. Got a text message from one of the track uh, board members. Well, I won't, I won't name him. And he said, "Hey, that, that was really cute, right? That was cute. Offering people a free tire for burning the cones. Good concept, right?" <laughs> he goes, "But there's a tire shortage. You're not a racer. You can't even buy a tire." <laughs> Valid point. I might have to give him a gift certificate. He's right on. And uh, he said that. He did say that there was a mistake made. Um, the cone maybe got hit. It was pushed close together. They, they looked at it. They, they figured they probably made the wrong call there too little too late. But uh, but I, I, I got to laugh. He kind of got me on that one. Yeah, I, I probably can't buy any tires. Hell, if you're racing, you can't buy tires. I, I, I definitely can't buy tires. So <laughs> he's right on. All right. The Advantage RV Modified Tour uh, winding down this weekend championship weekend johnny broking leading the way i think uh i think he's got a pretty comfortable lead but there's three races left and remember last year going into championship weekend tyler peterson right had a fairly okay lead it was close but it was fairly okay and he things fell apart johnny keep your shit together right like you you got this get her done and uh tyler peterson though remember five straight um, wins in the advantage RV. He hasn't run the whole series. Otherwise he'd be contending there, of course, with Johnny Broking, but they're going to run at I-94 sure step speedway Friday, Miller central speedway in South Dakota Saturday. And they're wrapping it up at the baddest bull ring in Wissota, the casino speedway in Watertown on Sunday. All of that can be found on dirt race central. And I want to thank Ben and the crew because they give us a lot of footage that we can use for the show. And I want to thank them. So uh, check all that out. If you can't get there, Dirt Race Central will have the action. Okay. And Ryan, we just, we touched on this a little bit, but a little side bet you had with Brad, um, one of the guys on the team here, um, he took you for a few bucks. He did. 
did. He did. He's taking my money. He's taking my money. We we talked about the Superior Show coming up. I think he took Jeff's money, too. So, Brad, collect from Jeff, our late model expert, who might be losing his job. We'll find out. We'll talk about that in a second. But uh, I, I don't remember how many cars we said, but I way undershot. I thought I did not expect there to be more than 12-ish open late models at the Superior Showcase. There was over 20. Um, so Brad, I thought he was being an eternal optimist. He was spot on. He got me on that one. So I'm going to have to double or nothing on something. But, uh, speaking of Jeff, I want to give a shout out new listener here. Um, Jack beyond new listener to the show, right? Big race fan, been around a while. And, uh, rumor has it, he's kind of moving in on the turf, um, has some connections looking to maybe replace Jeff as a late model expert. Stay tuned. <laughs> Speaking of the, the guys showing up to Superior, one guy I was interested in was Dennis Herb. Would he go to Superior? We know that's a no. Kind of wondering, would he go to, will he go to the North-South? We will see. Or would he skip both and just concentrate on that Woo title? So we know the answer to Superior. I don't know, Bert, you have an opinion? Do you think we will see Dennis Herb show up in Florence? Um, I'm going to say no. I, I mean, I, ha I have absolute, that's just a guess on my part. Uh, I'll say no. Ryan, what do you think? I mean, just concentrate on that Wu title. I mean, they don't race for what, two weeks. They're in uh, Williams Grove, I believe. North South 100 is one of those iconic races, right? It's a, it's a true crown jewel. Been around for a long time. Not his cup of tea, right? He's not, he's not the bang the right rear off the cushion. He's not that guy. Um, but the year he's had 75,000 to win, I would have to think he'd give it a shot. I don't know. I haven't looked at his website, but kind of hoping he does. I'm expecting a pretty good car count there. All right. So let's move on to the standings. Bert stays atop at 107. Still nipping at your heels. If you would add JD, I had JD. I had Mars. I had Mars in the when to go show local late models. Obviously I had, I had both those. Plus I had sweet in the race when he got passed and lap on, turn four in the last lap <laughs> i believe i did i had sweet one of the nights so that must have been the night because i don't think i got any points out of the world of outlaws there but um so you can see on the screen here the pickums you know the maiden memorial north south 100 of course knoxville nationals throwing a couple of usmts racers for ryan he's got rodney sanders i think in all of them <laughs> hey mojo every time i put somebody in the not hot list they won probably wouldn't be a bad pick so Mater Memorial coming up, though. That's a big one, right? 55-55 in memory of the, the late Dwayne Mater, um, a guy that raced late models many trips up to the Hibbing Raceway. Um, get out there, support that over at the Red Cedar Speedway in Menominee. Um, just, uh, you know, the Mater family has been huge in racing, but Dwayne Mater was a guy that a lot of people really liked Dwayne Mater. And uh, it's, it's pretty cool that Bulldog and them are putting on this uh, – putting on this big event in his memory. Is that kind of yeah, what you're it, looking forward to this? Oh, go ahead. I was just going to say, and uh, it, it seemed like every time Dwayne Mader came to Shano Speedway to race, he always won. Uh, he had a very good, he had a very good uh, track record at Shano Speedway in when he made an appearance there. Yeah. A lot of great racing this week. Another full deck, you know, with, with uh, whether you're a sprint car fan, late model fan, local late model fan, there's a lot going on. So Bert, do you have one in particular? Um, well, I mean, North South is, uh, all, you know, that should be pretty good uh, with, you know, racing for 75,000 to win. And then you have uh, the Josh Rice factor who never loses at that track now. Uh, so Don't be jinxing him. What the hell is wrong with <laughs> hey, hey, I was the only one who picked him at the, earlier this year. And now everybody's jumping on the bandwagon. So, uh... <laughs> Ryan, is that your most look forward to race in North South? Tell the little story. It's Knox. I mean, Keith's our sprint car expert. It's Knoxville Nationals Week, right? So we're talking about it's the biggest week in sprint car racing, the Knoxville Nationals. It'll be interesting to see them locals. That Brian Brown, he's quick at home. Josh Martin. Is it going to be somebody from the local area? Is it going to be a PA Posse? Is it going to be a Woo regular? Is it going to be Kyle Larson, who's none of the above? There's all you kinds of different things that could happen that's gonna be a good one but but uh guys get get this so i'm driving for halber lines right and i'm looking at my loads and i went down to nashville and i come back up and i'm going where am i going next i deliver 
in Cincinnati, Ohio on Friday. So I got to looking and I'm like, what's by Cincinnati, Ohio? Florence, Kentucky's 20 miles away. Guys, I, I don't think I'm going to have a load on Saturday. I'm not 100% sure. I'm hoping not. Knock on wood. I will be at the North South 100. And uh, they got the Dirt Late Model Hall of Fame. The new inductees going in. I get to check that out. Um, so I'm going I'm to sneak on over there Saturday. We'll see what time I get in on Friday. Maybe I'll try to do that. I already checked with the company if I could take some personal conveyance to get over there. So never been to Florence. Um, watched races there. Josh Rice is worth the price of admission. 75000 to win, right? And I believe it's going to be on Flow Racing, so you can check it out online if you're not over there. But that race, I'm I'm super looking forward to that one. Awesome. Well, get us a little coverage down there. Keep us posted, all of us. <laughs> That'll be great. All right, anything else? Like I said, Knoxville is kind of the one for me. Like I said, it's the biggest one. And remember, normally they come off Knoxville. Actually, back in my days of living in Montana, they'd come off Knoxville. They'd run. They'd do out the Western Swing. They'd, they'd get out to Billings, Rapid City, uh, maybe head out to Skagit, do, you know, kind of head out in the far west. Well, this, I'm pretty sure – I want to get this for next week, but I think next week they remember they moved the Jackson Nationals. They put that other race, the one that Sheldon won. Now I can't think of it. Was it a hundred thousand to win? What they called the High Banks, the High Banks. Yeah. So I think the Jackson Nationals, which were a couple of years ago, remember the Woo late models raced with them. They raised twenty grand to win. They had like twenty late models. Um, but I think that's already next weekend. So they're going to go back to back with two pretty not just big shows, but the tradition. You know, the, 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 you know, the, the, uh, what do you call it? The, uh, prestige of those shows. They're going to go back to back week. And so pretty intense two weeks here for the world of outlaw spring cars. Absolutely. So looking forward to it, but that's all I got. I mean, that's a lot of content, a lot of racing, get out to your favorite tracks. If you can't make it there, jump online, a little, one more shout out dirt race central, all the Wasota action. They'll have the mater. They'll have the advantage RV stuff. Check that out. Bert, isn't there a dirt Kings race too? Uh, I believe Sunday night they uh, go to Angel Park Speedway down by uh, in Sun Prairie, uh, Wisconsin, which is near Madison, Wisconsin. Um, and then uh, actually a week from this Friday, then they go to Mississippi Thunder for that 10,000 to win show. Yep. And then that Saturday is the rescheduled 5,000 at Cedar. So keep that in mind. So there's a chance Puka will be back at the Cedar Lake Speedway, make another appearance. Well, as a matter of fact, there's a chance Puka will be at the Mississippi Thunder Speedway, but um, based on weather, based on all kinds of other things, but there is a chance that uh, maybe I'll do that little loop. I'd, I'd like to get the Mississippi Thunder. I haven't been there yet. Hit Cedar on the way home pretty easy. All right, that's it, fellas? That's yes. it. All right, please, uh, like I said, like and subscribe. Um, you know, racers out there, share the show. We'd appreciate a share. It's kind of how this whole game works. Um, you know, kind of get the word out there. Uh, like I said, Mater Memorial this weekend or Cedar Lake, wherever. I mean, because I'm in the cities Friday, so there's a small chance I'll get to the Mater. But, um, you know, I always have swag. Uh, got rid of some swag uh, over the weekend at Cedar Lake. So great to see everyone. We're actually getting a little low. So if you want some swag before the end of the year, find one of us, uh, contact one of us. We'll get you taken care of. As always, big thanks. Dirt Track Supply, Brad Parsons Soil and Egg Solutions, Chase Schmidt Real Estate, Julie's Rates Engines, BioRayShirts.com, Impact Health Sharing, Blue Line Brews, and Mason Aaron videos, the one to go show at gmail.com to get a hold of us. Um, again, 114,000 last time I looked on TikTok, but find us there Spotify, Snapchat, Facebook, Rumble, and YouTube. For Ryan AO, for Bert Lehman, it is Puka. Get out there and be your dream. You're tuned to the one to go show. <laughs>